Hey guys, I'm Saurabh and in this video... Oh wait, you can't see me, right? Oh. <sighs> hey guys, I'm Saurabh and in this video, let's talk about how to edit the Milky Way images. Now, many of you people have requested a video on how to shoot the Milky Way and that video will be coming on my channel in the next week, so stay tuned for that. And in this video, we'll be seeing how to convert this raw file of the Milky Way to this. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Yeah, so the editing process will be divided into two parts. The first part is where we will be using Lightroom and we will be making some corrections like color corrections, contrast and stuff. In the second part, we will take the file from the Lightroom to the Photoshop and then we will make some advanced adjustments like some noise corrections, some masking and I'll like tell you in detail what I will exactly do. So let's start editing. So here we are in Lightroom. The first thing that I would like to change is the white balance. Now while shooting, I was at 3300. So maybe that's a bit cool. So I, would, I will try 3400. Let's see what 3500 looks like. Okay, I'm happy with 3400. So once I'm happy with my uh, white balance, basically the temperature and tint, I don't think I'm going to change my tint here. You can change it according to the raw file that you have captured. So once I'm done with the colors and I'm happy with the colors that I can see, I will now kind of deal with the exposure part. So first let's like open up a bit of shadows. So I will make it like around 50 so that I can see some details. Like I can go up to plus 100 to get more details, but that would just look fake because of course it's night time and you won't have much light in the shadows. So just about 40, 45 or 50 would be good. And then I would slightly increase the highlights. So if you see, if I increase the highlights, this part looks good, but this is kind of distracting, right? So what I will do is I'll slightly increase the highlight and later I will do some local adjustments. Now, since I'm doing the global adjustments, even this particular part will be affected. So once I'm happy with that, I will like, I can go crazy, but of course that's not what I want. I will adjust my white point. So around 40 is good. So now if I reduce the black, the Milky Way starts looking better. But the thing is, again, the shadows are getting affected too. So what I will do is I will slightly increase the black points just to bring out some details from the shadows and later I will adjust the Milky Way. And I won't touch the clarity because again, if I increase the clarity, the shadow starts looking rubbish and that's why I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to increase the vibrance a bit, just about 20 to 25, just to get those colors. I am not a big fan of saturation because once you increase the saturation, the image starts looking fake. And you want to edit the image, you want to get the colors, but you don't want the image to look fake, right? So once I'm happy with that, I will go to the tone curve and I'll slightly just use a slightly uh, like S curve. I guess that's it very slight S curve, but makes a difference, right? And then in the hue saturation luminance panel, basically what I will do is I'll go to luminance and I'll select this particular part. So when I select this particular part, I can drag and make it bright or dark, make it bright or dark, right? So I can do that. You can change the hue of the colors as well. If you're not happy with the colors of the image, again, it depends on what kind of you know, image you have captured, right? That matters a lot. So I will slightly increase the luminance just to get a bit more glow in the Milky Way part. Again, I'll select this target area and just increase it a bit. So yeah. So if you see this part is actually a combination of blue and aqua, but you don't have to figure it out. Just use this pointer and do it. So once I'm done with that, I'm not going to touch the split toning. But I'm going to change the details. Details is the part where like the sharpness and noise will be handled. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to the main part of the Milky Way so I can see what exactly I'm doing because that is the main focus of the image and I want to sharpen my image according to that. So I will set my sharpening to 60. I won't set it like maybe 80 or 100 because the ISO is actually 30 to 100 in this one. So 60 is fine for me and then luminance I will set to about 50 because you know there's too much of noise here and if you want to get rid of that noise 
I think 50 is just too much. Maybe around 40 would be good. Yeah, so you have to find a point where, you know, you get good details, but also at the same time, the stars are actually visible and you have details. And then I will click and hold Alt and I will drag the masking so that I can see what exactly is getting sharpened and what exactly is not. The black parts are not getting sharpened, the white parts are getting sharpened. So the so actually the parts where I don't want much details, like you can see in the foreground, I can leave that a bit black so that you know not much noise is generated. And at the same time, since the stars are actually in white, those things will actually be sharpened. So what I did with this is I reduced noise in the image, but I maintained the details that is there and present in the Milky Way. So once I'm done with that, I will enable my profile corrections and chromatic aberrations. So I get rid of the chromatic aberrations and any fringing. So once I'm happy with those things, I will just slightly introduce a vignette of minus 10 and feather of 100 so that it looks soft. And once I'm done with this, I'm pretty happy with how the global adjustments are done. If you see the before and after, just with some global adjustments, we have transformed the image a lot. But now we want some local adjustments as well. Like for example, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a graduated filter and I'm going to pull down right from here, just, yeah. So this is what I want my graduated filter. So I'm actually targeting the sky, right? So now what I'm going to do, what I am actually going to increase the clarity. So once you increase the clarity, let me do a positive 100 so that you can see what it exactly does. You will see that it brings a lot more details from the stars and that is what exactly you want, right? Of course, I'm not going crazy with positive 100. Uh, just a plus 40 would be good. And so that's actually helping to bring a lot more details from the Milky Way. And once I'm happy with what clarity is doing, I will slightly use dehaze to cut that haze because you know there's like kind of light pollution and the atmospheric haze is actually cut down when you use a slight of dehaze. Now remember you these options are very powerful. Don't overdo it. Make sure that you're not making the image look very crazy. So then I will just reduce the blacks just a bit, just minus five, and then I won't go crazy with it. I will just shift it to this and then we'll pull this a bit down. So I have done it to minus five. I will increase the highlights. So this particular part you see the glow from the Milky Way, you want that to be highlighted. So I will just use a positive 10 and that's it. That's pretty much it what I'm going to do. So if you see just with one graduated filter, actually I'm able to change a lot of things, right? You know, I'm able to bring a lot more details in the galaxy and I'm actually seeing more details right now. So once I'm happy with it, I will close that. So yeah, now the graduated filter has been done and I will slightly add one more graduated filter. Actually, I will hold shift so that my graduated filter is straight and I will just reduce the clarity a bit just of minus five so that, you know, the noise kinds of starts getting reduced and I will slightly increase the shadows so I can see a bit more details in the shadows. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to now use certain local adjustments again to fix certain areas. So I don't like this particular part because this is just too bright for me. And you want your attention to go to the Milky Way because that is the main part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a radial filter right now and then I'm going to draw a radial filter right here just pull it right here. So once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to reduce the highlights completely. Yeah, minus 100 looks better, but I will slightly use a minus 75. I don't want to overdo it. So minus 75 is working perfect for me. So once I'm happy with that, I will just close it. And as you can see, the radial filter has actually done a lot of things. You know, it has taken the like attention so if you see the radial filter, the radial filter has like slightly taken the attention out from the house that you can see right here. So and that is what exactly I want. I don't want the attention to go there. 
I will use one more radial filter for the Milky Way galaxy just for that. So I will use a radial filter and then I will slightly rotate it just to match the angle of the Milky Way. So this is the workflow that I would generally keep for the Milky Way images, right? Uh, the workflow might change according to your files, but uh, overall, I hope you are getting the idea of what exactly you have to do. Again, I would use clarity of plus 15 and I would slightly dehaze it just to bring that more details from the Milky Way. And again, I will slightly increase the highlights just a bit, just a bit to get that glow. You can see this part, the glow is like much pronounced right now. I'll slightly decrease the blacks to make it look more contrasty and maybe a bit of exposure just to keep the Milky Way the brighter part in the sky. And if you see the image right now, it looks good. And you might, you might think that the adjustments are not very severe. But if you really again compare the before and after, you will see that actually the difference is a lot. You are starting to get to see a lot more details in the galaxy. The exposure in the shadows is actually handled pretty well. And again, the overall image looks much better. So this is the basic process and I guess for most of the images, this is going to be the basic workflow. Now I'm going to take this image in Photoshop and I'm going to do some minor adjustments to make it look much better. So let's do it. So I'll right click, edit in Photoshop. Yeah, so now I'm in Photoshop and I'm going to do certain adjustments. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my layer by pressing Command J or Control J on Windows. And the spot healing brush tool, I will just remove this particular part. So if you see with the spot healing brush tool, I'm just going to click it plus 100 and I'm going to remove this particular part. So if you see that light that was distracting is removed right now. So that was something I would do and that's it for the cloning part. Now I will use the Color Effects Pro 4 from the Google Nick. If you see my editing tutorials, you know that I'm a big fan of this plugin. It's free. The link will be down in the description below. So again, the Color Effects Pro 4 is a plugin which I use for adding some kind of contrast to my images, right? So I will just like reset this. So I'm using pro contrast here. Generally, I start with the pro contrast. So what I would do first is I will slightly pull the color correct cast. So maybe about just about plus 25. So if you see that takes that blue shift and adds a bit of a natural colors, because if you had any kind of color shifts, then it's a good tool to use. Maybe a bit of plus 35. And yeah, I'm happy with that. And then I would add some dynamic contrast. So dynamic contrast works really well. It helps to give contrast, but at the same time, the highlights and shadows also look uh, not natural. And I won't overdo it. I will just use it a bit because I don't want it to look fake. As I said, these tools are very, very powerful. You have to make sure that, you know, you're not overwhelmed and you're using a lot of it. You have to make sure the images kind of look natural. So once I'm happy with the pro contrast, you see here, I'm really happy with how the pro contrast looks. I'm going to use a classical soft focus. So the classical soft focus, as you can see, is giving a soft glow. So I'm going to use it just about 20%. Uh, yeah, so 20% classical soft focus gives me that soft glow that I want. And that really makes the Milky Way pop. So that's something I'm going to use. The next thing I'm going to use is the tonal contrast. Now the tonal contrast is the most powerful tool for adding contrast. So, but of course this looks fake. So let me reset this to zero. So once I'm done with this, I won't touch the saturation. So it will take some time to load of course, because it's a very heavy application. I will just add a bit of contrast in the shadows, 2%, mid tones, a bit more, 5% and highlights a bit more like 5%. So now, if you see, you might not be able to tell the difference right away, but if I show you the before and after, just with the tonal contrast, you can see there's a lot more details that can be seen.
So this is actually without the tonal contrast and this is actually with the tonal contrast. The difference is slight but actually the difference is a lot when you actually see the before and after once you actually export the image. So let me click on OK. These are the three things that I was going to use in the Color FX Pro 4 just to add some contrast and that soft glow. I really love this plugin and really love the kind of results it provides. So once I'm happy with it, just I will show you the before and after. This is not actually the before and after, this is just with the Color FX Pro 4. So I get more glow, more details in shadows, the color cast is gone and the overall image looks a bit more natural. So this is how I would edit the image. I would maybe slightly add a S curve again, maybe add a contrast curve. So, but this is just fine tweaking the image and like depends on how you like it. Maybe I won't use it, maybe I would use it just a bit like 60%, that's it. So once I'm happy with it, now what I will do is I will do the noise reduction. So we did a bit in Lightroom, but Photoshop has slightly more powerful options. By Photoshop, again, I mean the Google Nick. So within the Google Nick, in the Define 2 panel, I will use the Define 2 part. So the Define 2 is again a plugin for noise reduction and it is my favorite plugin for noise reduction till now. It really, really works very nicely. So actually it would reduce some certain noise in the shadows if you see the noise here is reduced, right? The sky part is not affected because the noise is only captured in this particular part. So if you really want the noise to be captured from the sky part, what I would do is I'll go to method and manual and I'll click on this thing and I will select this particular part where there are not much stars and then I will click on measure noise. So it will do its job of measuring noise and it will do its best to remove the noise. So if you see the noise is removed, so of course you would feel the details are getting lost, but we will handle that in a bit. So once I'm happy with the overall noise reduction, I will click OK. So once I'm happy with the noise reduction, what I will do is I will add a mask. So I will add a white mask and I will add a gradient filter. So I don't want this noise reduction to be applied here. I just want to, it to be applied here and just a bit here. So what I will do is I will, I am using a black and white mask. So basically, if you see this mask is only applied to this part, the rest is black. The portion you see in red is not getting affected. So I have used noise reduction, but only for this particular part, right? This particular part is still having some noise. So again, I will use a control J and this time I'm actually going to modify the mask. I'm actually only going to select this particular part. So again, the part you see in the red is not getting affected, but this particular part will be affected. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the noise la layer, the noise reduction layer, and I'm going to reduce the opacity just about 25 to 30%. So I'm using the noise reduction, but not totally because I don't want to lose the details. But at the same time, I'm reducing a bit of noise. If I zoom in a bit more, you will be able to see. So let me increase it to total 100. You will be able to see what I'm talking about. But I'm, but I'm losing some details as well, right? So I'm going to reduce the opacity till I'm happy. So maybe about 40 to 50% would be fine. Let me keep it 50 for this particular result. So I'm happy with the overall result and this is the before and this is the after. So just with few adjustments in Lightroom and just with few adjustments in Photoshop, we are actually able to pop up that Milky Way and make the overall image look better. So that's it from this video guys and if you enjoyed the video, press the like button. If you loved the video, press the subscribe button if you haven't already. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.